What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Eddie Hearn and Andre Ward. These guys had a verbal sparring session uh, that lasted, that concerned both of their fighters, uh, <clears throat> Warrington and Stevenson, Shakur Stevenson, because they were trying to get a particular fight made while unifying the belts. Of course, we know that Eddie Hearn He's uh, <clears throat> looking, he's involving Josh Warrington. And of course, Andre Ward is promoting um, uh, Shakur Stevenson. Okay, so he is the uh, the manager of just Shakur Stevenson. And he, you know, he guides his career the best that he can. And these guys had a go over uh, the uh, internet, of course. And this is how it is. It started with Shakur Stevenson. He said, I can't get the Warrington fight next at Eddie Hearn. And Warrington decided they would rather fight an interim champion with two losses instead of unifying the belt with me, which is he is undefeated. Okay. Eddie Hearn chimed in and he said, you turned down what we and your promoter felt was a solid offer. And Andre SOG Ward counterpunched with this. He said, now you know how the game goes, Eddie. Just because you believe an offer is very solid doesn't mean that the fighter or his management have to agree. We are not after solid. Shakur deserves better than solid if he is going across any pond. Hope you and your family are safe. Wow. Okay. So, <clears throat> Eddie comes back and says, Understand, you have to agree. You have to agree it. I'm not calling you out for not accepting. I'm responding to a fighter who is calling Josh and I out saying we didn't want the fight. We, when we were the only ones making offers and the ones that we and his SS promoter felt was acceptable. Stay well, exclamation mark. So it was a little beef back and forth. It was cordial beef because you got two distinguishing gentlemen. You got Eddie Hearn from the UK. He's a British lad. And you got uh, SOG Ward, which is one of the most boxing prestigious. You know, you don't see him, you know, swear, drink or smoke or party in that thing. He has a, a reputation to uphold being the son of God. That's what SOG stands for because he's a very religious man and spiritual person. And, you know, I look at both of these guys. I have respect for both of them, what they did in the ring with uh, Andre Ward and outside the ring with Andre Ward. And Eddie Hearn is the things that he's able to do on both sides of the pond. You know, um, <clears throat> I'm looking at it as a standoff. You know, I take no sides. I just look at both sides simply because Andre Ward just told him how it is. He didn't have to curse he didn't have to slander. He didn't have to pull the race card. He didn't have to do any of that. He just told it how it was. Hey, look, just because you think it's a solid offer don't mean we think it's a solid offer. You know, <clears throat> and you know how the game goes. Across any pond, you have to, you know, you have to serve or offer a, a certain amount of money instead of a solid offer. And see, a lot of times these fighters from the U.S., they want an incentive to go across the water, you know, and you got to look at a guy like Shakur Stevenson that got the uh, the, the silver uh, medal in the Olympics, and he's bummed out about that. And, of course, that didn't happen in the States. So a lot of favoritism. You know, ask Floyd Mayweather Jr., ask Roy Jones Jr. These guys were robbed in a foreign land. So uh, Americans' perception of going somewhere else, it's always a phobia of possibly having corruption in that area. Just like someone from some other place might have that same over here, i.e. Lennox Lewis, Tyson Fury, to name a couple, okay? You know, Triple G, to name, you know, from the first Canelo fight. You know, so there's favoritism and there's, there's things, and there's reasons why people would, would, would be skeptical and reluctant to go over across any foreign land and fight unless they were getting something big on incentive that, that it's worth, you know, it's worth the risk. Just like Charles Martin, okay? Charles Martin went across the globe to fight Anthony Joshua for his IBF belt for like seven, eight million dollars, you know? So that's worth going over there, you know what I mean? You have money, 
you're a millionaire now because you you decided to take that risk. Now, understand a lot of people are not going to do that, especially when a person like Shakur Stevenson that just really got started. You know what I mean? Um, not saying that they would rob him in another land. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you have to look through the eyes of Shakur Stevenson and, and, and his experience, right, with that type of thing, that's what could possibly happen. So in that case, they need to come up with some more duckies, okay? Cheddar, cheese, liquid. They got to come up with more of it. That's what Andre Ward's saying. Now, the only thing I would add, I would counterpunch about Andre Ward, if that was the case, if you felt that it wasn't a solid offer, say, or not, let's put it this way, decline the offer with a suggestion. That keeps the door open. That keeps the door revolving. Don't just say, no, it's not an acceptable offer. We want more. See, the thing is, if you want to negotiate and you want to keep it open, you would say, give us more, you know, give us what we feel. You know what I mean? Let's try this number. You know what I mean? You know how it goes. You ask for 50, they ask for 40. You ask for 45, they may say sold. They might ask for 47, whatever the case is, you know, it, it, it but they're bargaining. They're still communicating, you know, and I, that's my only thing. When a lot of these guys and a lot of people deal with Eddie Hearn, they either don't respond, jump on social media, make a reply on how, hey, that this offer wasn't good enough, they were being lowballed, and then that, then all of a sudden it gets dirty and murky, and, the, and all this information that doesn't even supposed to come to the forefront comes out. See, that's the problem, okay? Like the Deontay Wilder negotiations with Anthony Joshua, that was a cluster. Let's just be real. It was no good. No bueno. Not at all. So I feel that these guys, if they really want to negotiate, these guys should actually, you know, either reply, you know, either it's through email, like, hey, we want more, you know, give me a good number. You know what I mean? And they always leave it up to the other people. Make a suggestion because they could always see the the offering, uh, the offering team, which was team, uh, Wow, I mean, uh, Hearn, you know, and warranted, these guys could have made an offer, a counter offer. They could have counter offered and then they could have accepted it or not or rejected it. You know, that's simple as that. But just saying, no, it's not a solid offer. We're not going to do this, you know, but stay well. You know, it, it, I, I don't think and I don't really believe that boxing is that transparent. You know, like I can understand a person off, is, is, thinks they're worth more money. I get that. You risk your lives in the game, in the sport. Sorry, the sport, not the game. And yes, you deserve compensation for your risk. Your reward's supposed to be similar to your risk, which you can't put a label on human life. So, But still, at least to be enough money for you to gamble with your life. Okay? So I feel that it's not enough people that are counter-offering Eddie Hearn. You know what I mean? I think, you know, just like the Luis Ortiz, uh, Anthony Joshua negotiations, that was shit too. Because those guys turned down an offer, jumped on social media, and then all of a sudden, it oh, hey, yeah, they're lowballing us. No go, guys. We thought we really wanted this fight. And come to find out, Luis Ortiz and, and, and Herman Caracedo didn't know anything about the offer. See, that's sad. See, that type of stuff. See, we got too much of that. See, it's the corruption with someone that has vested interest in these fighters that don't want certain fighters uh, or certain fights to come together due to political reasons or whatever, you know? You know, network espionage and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but this was like a little verbal sparring back and forth between Andre Ward and SOG. Would anything come out of it? Probably not, because SOG... Andre has a pragmatic and polite. He's pragmatic, but he's very polite at the same time. But he's direct. Okay? Um, I see what Eddie Hearn's saying, too, to counterpunch that, because Eddie Hearn's saying, well, hey, you know, I'm not calling you out for not accepting, meaning Andre Ward's not the bad guy. You know what I mean? I'm responding to the fighter who is calling Josh Warrington out saying we didn't want the fight. See, it's too much of that. 
that's been going on since what 18 that Eddie Hearn and you know or Eddie Hearn's fighters or team matchroom don't like to make fights and that's absolutely false I don't believe that shit because you cannot tell me that a person that sends that many offers to the, pe the people that they supposed to not want to fight that makes no sense because they'll run for the hills if they accepted that you know what I mean they're not just sending out offers with contracts attached to them you know what I mean because if that was the case and they reneged and said, you know what, we changed our mind, then they have all the information they needed and then they can post and blast that on social media because it happens. It can happen, okay? So, you know, this was a good uh, verbal sparring uh, between Eddie Hearn and Andre Ward. You know, I look at both of these guys, I understand both sides. You guys tell me what you think about this whole ordeal between Andre Ward and Eddie Hearn. Of course, please subscribe and you guys been counterpunched. Peace.